Hi, my name is Carl Bostrom. I'm a principal engineer with Bosch Rexroth, and I'd like to introduce you to our new control platform, Control X Core. We'll walk through the basic system options, give an overview of the system scalability, and discuss how the system may be extended by the user. Control X Automation introduces a family of controllers all built on the same technology, Control X Core. The controllers come in several form factors, including IPC, a standalone embedded controller, or as a controller drive combination called Control X Drive Plus. If we focus on the standalone embedded controller, we see connectivity for EtherCAT and a TSN ready gigabit Ethernet interface with a view towards OPC UA over TSN. A separate Ethernet port allows for HMI connectivity or system configuration. Profinet, CAN, and IO-Link are supported as optional onboard extensions. Additional extension modules are also planned. Note the USB connectivity and that the system storage may be extended using an optional SD card. The operating system employed on Control X Core is Ubuntu Core, a Linux variant purpose-built for embedded systems. Ubuntu Core supports a scalable software architecture using software containers called Snaps. The result is an open platform that removes barriers between machine control, IT, and OT. Other benefits include an open ecosystem, faster time to production, and a stronger security over the life cycle of the device. The goal was to design a control platform in which the worlds of automation and IoT were united in an open and secure way and in which first-class open source software could be leveraged. In the words of Dr. Holger Schnabel, with the support of Ubuntu Core, Control X Automation can combine the worlds of automation and IoT in an open, modular, and secure way to build a future-proofed and innovative automation platform. Snaps are self-contained applications running in a sandbox with mediated or governed access to the host system. The snap file format is a single compressed file system. The file format is squashfs with the extension snap. This file system contains the application any library dependencies, and declarative metadata. This metadata is interpreted by a system service called SNAP-D to set up an appropriately shaped secure sandbox for the application. After installation, the SNAP is mounted by the host operating system and decompressed on the fly when the files are used. Applications in a SNAP run in a container with limited access to the host system. Using so-called interfaces, users can give an application access to additional features of the host, such as networking functionality or USB devices. Apps can be installed or removed from Control X Core using the Control X Core web interface. Apps can be loaded from a private store or side loaded a public store where third parties can market and distribute apps written specifically for the Control X platform is also planned and will be available in the near future. So now let's turn to our actual system. We open the web interface to the control by entering the IP address of the control into our browser's address bar and entering our user credentials like so. Our system applications are found under the Settings tab here under Apps. And here we can view all of the apps that we have installed in our system. We have access to our online store, and we have access to our local storage here. Uh, at this point, we can add apps to the local store by clicking the plus button and navigating to the app that we want to install. In this case, I'll install the remote agent app and say open. 
And from here, that app can be then installed. After installing it, we could then uninstall it using the uninstall button and so on. To delete the app from the online store, we'd simply click the delete button here. Bosch Rexroth offers a set of apps that allow users to add functionality to their systems. Basic apps include an IEC 611-131 based PLC, a motion app required when servos are present in the system, uh, in other words required for synchronous path planning, and an EtherCAT master app for EtherCAT connectivity. Additional apps provide functionality for OPC UA server, OPC UA client, VPN, and a firewall, among others. Of course, the system scope is always expanding and additional apps will be introduced in the future. Users can also create their own apps to scale the system beyond the functionality described previously or to bundle existing code bases or IP. User-defined apps may be integrated into the system via the so-called ControlX data layer. The ControlX data layer forms the backbone of ControlX core. The data layer, the control's data interface, includes data and other functionality which may be consumed or modified by a suitably qualified client. You can think of the data layer as the control's data store. When an app is installed on ControlX core, it may publish data or more generally expose functionality to the data layer. Such data appears as a clearly identifiable node within the data layer tree. For example, if we examine the data layer in our control, we see a PLC tag called dtest with a value of 321. And we see in our motion configuration axes 1 uh, and 2. As we uh, expand our PLC code or expand the motion configuration, we would see those additional axes or PLC tags appear in the data layer. The ControlX data layer is accessible via a secure, meaning HTTPS, REST API. User apps may also leverage a library set which provides direct real-time access to the data layer. This library, which also has a non-real-time component, currently supports C or C++. Wrapper libraries for additional languages will be available in the future. Uh, and as we mentioned previously, OPC UA is also available. For example, let's look at a simple Python application that uses the REST API to access a PLC variable available on the data layer. We'll then push the value of the PLC variable out a WebSocket for consumption by an HTML page. Notice that our application leverages two main open source Python modules. The module called WebSockets creates the WebSocket server and handles any client requests for data. The module called AIOHTTP handles the HTTP request to the controls REST API. Notice that prior to any requests for the PLC data, we require an access token shown here by a post request in which we submit our user credentials. The main loop shown in lines 28 through 30 simply toggles between the call to the REST API to retrieve the PLC data and the call to the WebSocket server. So let's launch our Python code uh, like so. If we open an HTML page where we've included uh, the JavaScript code necessary to make the WebSocket connection here, um, we see in our browser the PLC tag appearing here. If I then go back to my PLC application and change the value, like so, we immediately see the change in the browser. If I click on the Enable button here, that will increment automatically my uh, PLC variable. Again, we see 
the variable being incremented directly in the browser. The previous example showed how to access the control's data layer remotely using a small Python application. The same code can be built as a snap and run directly on the control itself. To do this, we must define a build manifest in the form of a snapcraft.yaml file. This file will look something like the listing shown here. Notice that the top section gives general information about our app, including the name, the version number, the summary, and so on. The next section, called Parts, lists our build and resource requirements. Finally, the app section defines the command used to call our app, in this case, Web Connector Lite, and some additional physical resources required by our application. Note that our app will run as a service daemon. I already have this snap running on my control here. If I open my HTML page and connect to the control, like so, I see the data as before, uh, but in this case there's no Python code running locally on my PC. Instead it's running directly on the control itself. The Snapcraft YAML file is used by a build utility called Snapcraft to bundle our application with any required dependencies. Once built, the resulting snap file can be loaded onto the control using the control's web interface as we showed before. Information about the process of snapping an application is readily available on the web. The main points here are that we access the control's data layer easily and securely using open source tools and that there is infrastructure in place to easily build our apps into containers that can then be loaded and run on the control. Also remember that Bosch Rexroth provides pre-built apps to cover most use cases. User-defined snaps will be required only in special use cases or where the customer wishes to leverage existing intellectual property. Thanks for your attention. For more information, please visit controlx-automation.com.